All right, so today we're going to deep dive into something really cool, uh, zip lying. And I know a lot of you guys out there, especially those tuning in from like Korea and other parts of Asia and the U.S., yeah, are familiar with the drone scene. But what Zipline is doing is really something on a whole other level. It's not just those, you know, quick deliveries that we're starting to see pop up. They've actually built the largest autonomous delivery system in the world. It's really crazy when you think about the scale. They've already done over half a million deliveries. And get this, over 40 million miles flown across three continents. That's basically circling the Earth like over 1,600 times. Pretty wild, right? And, you know, if you guys saw that recent video with Mark Rober, you kind of get a glimpse of just how impressive their tech really is. So in this deep dive, we're going to really unpack, you know, how Zipline kind of cracked the code of drone delivery. What are they doing that's so different? And what does it all mean for the future? Because let's be honest, this is the kind of stuff that really changes the game. Yeah. And what's interesting is, you know, they didn't set out to just deliver like everything under the sun, right? Yep. Their origin story is actually rooted in a much more kind of specific need. Okay, so spill the beans. What's the backstory here? So some of the founders at Zipline had family members who were working in public health, and they saw firsthand, you know, the struggles of trying to get vital medical supplies to remote areas or developing countries. The existing transportation systems just weren't really cutting it. So while companies like, I don't know, Amazon, for example, were making big headlines about, you know, delivering your next pizza by drone, Zipline was tackling a very real problem and really like a life or death problem. Yeah. That's got to be a pretty powerful motivator. For sure. And their approach was anything but conventional. They didn't start out in some fancy lab or anything. They were actually out on a thousand acre cattle ranch using like cardboard and duct tape, whatever they could get their hands on just to test and iterate their designs. That's so cool. It's like Silicon Valley startup meets like the Wild West. But that kind of scrappy, iterative approach, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably a huge reason why they were able to move so fast and actually figure out what works. Yeah, you're totally right. That constant learning and adapting really became part of their DNA. And it all boils down to this. They're obsessed with their customers' needs. That's like their secret sauce. Okay, so how does this customer obsession actually play out in what they're building? Give me an example. We'll take their two main platforms. Platform one, which looks like a mini airplane, was built because customers needed to move things far and fast. It's all about long range efficiency. That makes sense. They're not messing around when it comes to reaching those remote areas. Right. Then you have platform two, and this one is designed for deliveries that are closer to home, more in those urban environments. And they had this great idea. They wanted to make sure that it passed what they called the neighbor test. The neighbor test. I'm intrigued. Tell me more about that. Basically, they engineered it to be practically silent, so silent that your neighbor wouldn't even know that it was delivering a package next door. They realized that for drone delivery to really work in cities, you know, it had to be seamlessly integrated into people's lives. Nobody wants a constant buzz overhead. That's a really good point. They're not just thinking about the tech, but about how people actually live and experience the yeah. world. That's a lesson for anyone, really. Mm. Understanding your customer is key. Totally. And on the tech side, don't underestimate their technical chops because they actually developed their own autopilot software in-house. Wow. So they're not just slapping together off the shelf components here. They're going pretty deep on the tech side. Yeah, for sure. And it's not just some basic system either. They've actually borrowed sophisticated safety features from commercial airliners, from rockets, even satellites. These things are designed to be incredibly reliable. So we're talking next level safety and precision here. Absolutely. They have to be, especially when you consider the types of environments that they're operating in. Think about wind, for example. Their drones calculate wind speed and direction on the fly, adjusting the package release so that it can land with pinpoint accuracy. That's incredible. And speaking of impressive feats, they've flown 40 million miles autonomously without a single safety incident. I mean, that's a track record that really speaks for itself. Totally. And it brings us to another key aspect of their success. It's this idea of meeting diverse needs. They're not just a one trick pony. They've adapted their technology to a whole range of situations and challenges. OK, so give me some examples. What kind of diverse needs are we talking about here? So think about hospitals, for example. You know, the demand for medical supplies can be really unpredictable, but Zipline has actually managed to outperform traditional courier services in some cases making, you know, like 15 or more deliveries a day to a single hospital. That's a game changer, especially mm. in areas with limited infrastructure. You're literally saving lives with mm. that kind of speed and reliability. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just hospitals. They're operating in places with like incredibly challenging weather, like Rwanda, where lightning storms are like a frequent occurrence. Whoa, are you serious? They're flying drones in lightning storms. That sounds incredibly risky. It is, but they figured out ways to do it safely. They've got like sophisticated weather detection systems and protocols in place to really minimize the risk. That's wild. I mean, it speaks to their commitment to getting those supplies delivered. Yeah. No matter what. Totally. And then there's also the whole regulatory side of things, you know, working mm. with agencies like the FAA here in the U.S. and their counterparts in other countries. That's no walk in the park. Oh, yeah. Airspace regulations are notoriously complex, yeah. especially for something as new and rapidly evolving as drone technology. Exactly. But Zipline has been really proactive from the start. They've worked really closely with regulators, demonstrating the safety and reliability of their system. And that's helped to pave the way for broader drone adoption. And speaking of reliability, did you know that some of their drones have flown over 400,000 miles and they're still going strong? That's like driving a car around the earth. 16 times. It's crazy. It's a testament to the quality of their engineering and their rigorous testing process. They're not cutting corners when it comes to building things to last. And this is all just the beginning for them. I mean, they're already operating in seven countries mm -hmm. and they've got even bigger plans for global expansion. So what's their strategy for scaling up like that? Well, for Platform One, you know, those long range deliveries, they're strategically building out these distribution centers with massive coverage areas. They're basically creating these hubs mm -hmm. that can efficiently serve these vast regions. Exactly. And then for Platform 2, which is designed for those denser urban areas, they're taking a bit of a different approach. They're creating networks of charging locations. Uh, so instead of needing huge distribution centers everywhere, they can have these smaller charging hubs <laughs> strategically placed throughout the city. Right. It's a more agile and scalable model, perfect for expanding into those crowded cityscapes where speed and efficiency are really key. It's almost like they're building the infrastructure for a whole new transportation system, yeah. one that's sustainable, efficient, and honestly super exciting. And they're not stopping there. They're already exploring future innovations, like organ transport, even collaborating with NASA on potential applications. I mean, the sky's the limit, literally. Okay, so before we get too carried away daydreaming about flying cars and drone delivered everything, let's take a step back mm. and talk about the tech itself. What makes their system so unique and reliable? One of the things that really impresses me is their approach to safety. I mean, they've really gone above and beyond to create a system that's incredibly robust and resilient. It's not just about the technology itself, though, right? Why? It's also about that culture of safety they've built within the company. Oh, for sure. They've adopted best practices from industries where safety is paramount, like Commercial aviation, for example, they have multiple layers of redundancy built into their systems. So if one component fails, there's a backup ready to take over. Yeah. It's like having a safety net for your drones. Exactly. And they've invested heavily in what's called detect and avoid technology. This allows their drones to autonomously sense and avoid obstacles in the air. I've heard of that. Hmm. Isn't that similar to the technology being developed for self-driving cars? Yeah, exactly. It uses a combination of sensors, cameras, and algorithms to create this real-time map of the surrounding environment allowing the drone to make intelligent decisions to avoid collisions. So they could detect like other aircraft, birds, power lines, all that stuff. Even birds, which are notoriously unpredictable. It's pretty amazing. They even have a system that can detect and avoid bad weather. I mean, that level of sophistication yeah. is essential for operating safely, especially as they expand into those more densely populated areas with their Platform 2 drones. Speaking of Platform 2, we talked about that neighbor test earlier, but why is a quiet drone so crucial? especially for those urban deliveries. Well, think about it. If drones are constantly buzzing overhead, it would get pretty annoying pretty quickly, right? Imagine trying to enjoy like a quiet evening in your backyard and there's a drone whirring by every few minutes. Not exactly peaceful. Yeah, that would get old fast. Uh -huh. So they really had to prioritize noise reduction to make drone delivery acceptable in cities. For sure. You know, they knew that for people to really embrace this technology, it had to be seamlessly integrated into their lives. And the silent drone is a big part of achieving that. It's interesting because it really highlights how Zipline's not just focused on the technological challenges. They're also really thinking about the human element, how people will experience and interact with their drones. Absolutely. And that's where their customer-obsessed approach really shines. They're solving real problems for real people, not just building drones for the sake of building drones. It's like they're designing a system that's meant to enhance our lives, 
not disrupt them. And that's a really important distinction. And another key aspect of their Platform 2 design is its scalability. You know, they designed it in a way that allows them to rapidly expand their network of charging locations. So instead of having to build those massive distribution centers like they do with Platform 1, they can set up these smaller charging hubs in strategic locations throughout a city. Yep, you got it. It's kind of like building a network of mini airports for their drones. And this allows them to cover a much larger area with fewer resources, making drone delivery more accessible and affordable. That's brilliant. It's like they took those lessons from the telecom industry, where you build out cell towers to create a vast network and applied it to drone delivery. It's a smart strategy, and it highlights their long-term vision for the future of drone delivery. You know, they're not just thinking about the next few years, they're thinking about the next decade and beyond. That's the kind of forward-thinking approach that's needed to truly revolutionize an industry. But it hasn't all been smooth sailing right. I'm sure they've faced their fair share of challenges along the way. Of course. Any company that's pushing the boundaries of innovation is going to encounter obstacles, but it's how they respond to those challenges that really defines them. Okay, give me an example. What's one of the biggest hurdles they've had to overcome? Well, one of the biggest challenges they faced early on was navigating the complex world of aviation regulations. You know, different countries have different rules. And getting approval to operate drones in their airspace can be a long and complicated process. Yeah, I can imagine. It's not like they can just launch a bunch of drones and hope for the best. They have to work with an existing air traffic control systems and make sure everything is safe and coordinated. Right, yeah, it's a delicate balancing act. They need to innovate and push the boundaries of what's possible while also respecting the safety and security of the airspace. So how have they managed to navigate this regulatory maze? You know, they've actually been incredibly successful in this area. They've built strong relationships with regulatory agencies around the world, and they have a proven track record of operating safely and responsibly. They've even developed their own airspace traffic handling system, which allows them to manage the movement of their drones in a way that's both efficient and safe. It's really quite impressive. It sounds like they're not just building drones. They're building an entire ecosystem for drone operation. That's a huge undertaking. It is, and it speaks to their long-term vision. They're not just focused on the immediate challenges. They're thinking about the big picture mm. and laying the groundwork for a future where drones are a seamlessly integrated part of our lives. I'm curious about public perception. Not everyone is comfortable with the idea of drones flying over their heads, yeah. right? Have they encountered any pushback on that front? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there have definitely been concerns. Yeah about privacy noise pollution, even the potential for accidents. I mean, it's a new technology, and people need time to kind of understand it and adapt. So how is Zipline addressing those concerns? Are they just hoping people will come around on their own? No, they've been very proactive about it. You know, they've engaged with communities, educated the public about the technology, and really emphasized their commitment to safety and responsible operation. And it sounds like that approach is working. I mean, the track record speaks for itself. Yeah. 40 million miles without a single safety incident. That's got to put some minds at ease. For sure it helps. And as more and more people see the benefits of drone delivery firsthand, I think they're becoming more comfortable with the idea. It's a gradual process, but it's moving in the right direction. Okay, that makes sense.